Twitter's unpersoning of right-wing individuals was just the tip of their inner party plan. Twitter is now taking steps to make their platform more, quote, inclusive and diverse because, folks, that's what the Internet's really about. Let's take a look at the bullet points. Twitter is announcing the creation of a new trust and safety council, which will be made up of more than 40 organizations, while members include folks like the Anti-Defamation League and free, uh, feminine frequency. Journalist with Infowars.com, Paul, Paul Joseph Watson, is on the hunt to break it down for us. Thanks for being here, Paul. Thanks, Faith. Good to be here. All right. So Twitter's announced uh, just recently that it suspended some 125,000 accounts, most linked to the Islamic State. This new council has the word safety in it. And yet when I'm looking at the 40 organizations, it doesn't look like they're consulting too many counter-terrorist groups. What is this council really about? Well, they announced this council under the guise of um, the, the founder, Jack, the co-founder, Jack Dorsey, said, Freedom of expression starts with safety, which sounds like a line out of Orwell's 1984. But they promised that this would represent a diversity of voices to basically police content on Twitter and prevent harassment. The problem with that is that not one single conservative group appears on that list, not one true advocate of free speech. Who does appear on that list, as you mentioned, is Feminist Frequency, who, of course, is our old friend Anita Sarkeesian. Now, she got up in front of the UN um, a couple of months ago now and said she defined harassment as people who say you're a liar to a social justice warrior or people who say you suck to a feminist. She defines that, she characterizes that as harassment. And now she's on this council that will decide what constitutes harassment on Twitter. In addition to her, you've got groups like GLAAD, which is called for uh, banning people who don't embrace homosexual rights. You've got the Dangerous Speech Project, which is basically a George Soros front. So you've got all these radical left-wing groups, supposedly in the name of diversity, they're going to police content on Twitter. In the aftermath of Twitter banning and suspending conservatives for months for having the wrong politics, so you can understand why people are concerned about this. Um, you know, you brought up Jack Dorsey's tweet, and I'm wondering if you could comment on this difference between free speech and safe speech. Are we uh, growing more and more in the public sphere uh, towards the realm of, of essentially censoring opinions that we don't like? Well, freedom of expression doesn't start with safety. It starts and ends with freedom of expression. There's no I support free speech, but... You either allow all of it or allow none of it. And again, they're introducing this under the, under the rubric of preventing harassment. Look, if somebody calls you fat for being a feminist or if somebody criticizes you for having a certain political belief, deal with it. Stand up to them. Have a debate. That's what free speech is all about. It shouldn't be about creating a safe space for feminists and social justice warriors on Twitter so they can't be challenged and they can continue to engage in their own echo chamber. And this is dangerous. You know, people say, oh, Twitter's a private company. It can censor who it likes. Who cares, right? And while that's true, the problem is the collusion between social media and governments now, right? So social media is being used by governments to punish people for free speech. I'll give you an example. There was a Dutch guy a couple of weeks ago, in fact, several in a town in the Netherlands. One individual got on Twitter criticized his country's refugee policy, said it was, quote, a bad plan. Those were the words he used, a bad plan. He later got a home visit from the police who warned him as to his future conduct. We've got Facebook in Germany working with the German government and ex-members of the Stasi to find, track down people, hit them with fines and even jail sentences for making anti-migrant comments. We've got thousands of people arrested in the UK every single year for making tweets, including anti-Muslim sentiment. So when the standards are being set online, uh, they're being mirrored in the real world. So if we allow organizations like Twitter to broaden the definition of, quote, harassment and hate speech so that it becomes, you know, for example, criticism of the religion of Islam and people are being harassed by police, by the government being arrested for tweets, then it becomes a bigger problem than just the argument, oh, you know, Twitter's a private company, it can censor who it likes. This is a far bigger argument than that.
And in the case you just mentioned, it's a codification of Sharia. You know, you mentioned the fact you can engage with these people on Twitter or you can block them, delete your account, get off altogether. That's the beauty of a free country and a free platform. I've had people say that I should essentially have been uh, retroactively aborted. Guess what? Block, delete, ignore. I don't need Twitter to come in and essentially treat me uh, like a child. Uh, we also know that there's Saudi influence here as well. Uh, what is your prediction for the future of Twitter? We know that their stocks are crashing. They seem to have really uh, hit a glass ceiling of 320 uh, million users, I believe. Um, where, what does the future look like for the organization? Well, if, if they follow the example of companies like Mattel, who made a fat feminist Barbie with blue hair just so they could cave into social justice warriors, which created a marketing nightmare because nobody wants to buy it, then that's the direction that Twitter's heading. They've lost half their value in the last three months. For the first time ever, they've lost active users in Q4 down from 305 million to 303 million. So they're going to go the way of you know, Dig, which started censoring content way back when that was popular. Reddit lost a ton of users for censoring content. Uh, groups like MySpace, they create uh, policies that are completely antithetical to their users. They go into complete irrelevance. And that's where Twitter's heading if it continues with this censorship, because social media is all about a free and open, vigorous debate. If they make it into a huge safe space, for feminists, Islamists, and social justice warriors, and you know, make it antagonistic to anybody else with a differing opinion, which is what they're doing by banning, suspending conservatives now, then they're going to shrink. They're already shrinking, and they're, they're going to become irrelevant. And everybody on Twitter who is a conservative with a huge audience is going to go elsewhere. So it's not going to work out well for them. Well, I hope that folks in Silicon Valley and elsewhere are listening and realize that there is a demand for a truly free platform for folks like yourself um, who don't want to lose their audiences that tune in to hear their sometimes dangerous free speech. And I hope that they do create a truly pl uh, a free platform in the wake of, of what Twitter is doing in their censorship policy. Meantime, where can folks find you? People can find me on Twitter and, until I get banned, obviously, <laughs> at PrisonPlanet and Infowars.com. All right. Oh, it's so good to have you, Paul. Thanks so very much.